Meditation, the antidote of marriage. If marriage is chaos, meditation is cosmos. If marriage is an effort to stay together, meditation is the way to cherish aloneness. Through meditation, you can enter into those situations which you had abandoned as being chaos, disturbance and of that morning. But the only thing you have to remember, you are entering into these consciously. None of these characters, none of those situations exist now. You are a grown-up person, not a small child. I understand once a child was watching a movie. The child had a white dog. And in the movie, the white dog dies. The child began to cry. And it was very difficult to console her that it was not your dog was killed, instead some other dog. She wanted to see her dog and then after a while she collected herself. When you are going into the past situations and circumstances, all those people who have inflicted pain or chaos are no more. You are all alone and you are entering into those situations knowingly and consciously and reliving those moments. So meditation is the way to cherish aloneness, to enter into your aloneness and then cherish it. And marriage is an effort to stay together. Certainly, meditation is the antidote of marriage. Remember, meditation is the only phenomenon. There is no possibility of meeting anyone. Where you have to go alone, totally alone. Hence, only very courageous people can enter into the world of meditation. That is why so few people have ever entered the realm of meditation and also out of those, only selected few have attained to enlightenment. When you have moved inwards, there is no map. Even if you go to the moon, you have a certain map, a route, and everything is known. People before you, there have been people before you, their footprints are there, and there are milestones everywhere, even in the sea. You are not totally lost. So too in the sky, you are not totally lost. <coughs> you can communicate to the base center. You can communicate with people. You can send messages, even from moon. There are navigational systems everywhere on earth, sea and in space. You can remain in some kind of relationship, but you can remain connected through the radio waves. It may be just radio waves, but you can remain connected. You can still hear the voices of the people and you can still see that others are there watching you. You are connected through audio-visual techniques. But when you move inwards, the people who have, who have gone in before, you cannot leave any footprints for anyone. 
it is impossible because everybody's inner territory is so different that buddha's footprint would not help you in any way you will never find yourself and reach the inner space no footprints are there buddha's way cannot take you into that inner space that you are your inner space is different and it is totally different yes to some extent the experience of buddha can give you courage to move in jesus map would not help you you cannot follow it literally however it can help in a very indirect way certainly it can make you aware of a certain things inside but in a very weak manner it can give you the confidence yes there is a world inside and there is no doubt about it because so many people cannot be wrong as far as inner world is concerned buddha jesus jaratrust mohammed such beautiful cannot be wrong at all and at the same time they cannot there cannot be any conspiracy and for what and why should they be they never existed together certainly they lived in different ages different countries different time zones yet they all speak the same experience the same in their language but through different expressions different words different terminologies but you cannot follow it exactly because buddha's in a territory is different each individual is unique so unique that you have to discover yourself all alone your innermost this will require great courage and that is the greatest adventure in life and the one who goes through this adventure is blessed that is why i say marriage is a kios and a way to stay together with people of different natures different biological frameworks then meditation is the antidote if you are suffering for something and you are taking a medicine and there are side effects of it doctors give you antidote of that medicine so that the negative effects do not affect you and you can continue taking that medicine while the problem still remains that is why when you include the dimension of meditation into anything it gives you tremendous courage and helps you to go through that is why it is said that whatever you do whatever state you are in cures or otherwise if you enter into it meditatively it becomes easier and if the situation has passed and you are undergoing the state of chaos then you can re-enter revisit that situation meditatively and this will prepare you to face the situations when these appear in future so remember 
if marriage is the way is in a fertile state together and always remains chaotic, then meditation is the way to enter into your innerness all alone. It is a dark key. It will take a really a longer time. It all depends on your intensity to reach to the other shore. It is like a tunnel. It is said sometimes ago, a star all of a sudden disappears and goes into the black hole. And then another star is born. Scientists were working on this theory. When a star suddenly disappears, where does it go? And when another star is born, where does it emerge from? It is like a tunnel. One end of this is dark hole and the other end is full of light. It enters the, the biggest star enters into the cave through the black hole, passes through the cave, passes through the tunnel and after some time emerges back from the other side of the tunnel which is full of light. So you are entering into the cave of your innerness, the tunnel through the dark side, dark entrance. Because you are inflicted by the circumstances and situations for which you seek an answer, you have to enter into the tunnel through the dark side of the door. That is why it takes tremendous courage for you to enter into the meditation. People find it easier to go into rituals which is outside and not even understand why this ritual is performed, is asked to be performed. No one even bothers to ask when something is told to you, what is the scientific reason behind it? Unconsciously, we take a tasbih in our hand, a rosary, and keep on rotating it. We are doing everything, and yet still, the hands are mechanically moving on the beads of the rosary. In the hometown where I lived, a certain part of our complex was rented to some business people who belonged to the state of Rajasthan. On the campus there was a temple and the head of that organization said that he is a devotee of Shiva. Every day he will pray for two hours and during so the, he is sitting in the temple the office which was a flat platform with a carpet spread and a wooden box is placed in front which was a writing table with all the necessary material. A desk where you can sit down on the ground and work, something like that. Anytime phone rings, his attention is diverted to it. His hands are moving on the beads and he will is anxious to know who had called and what is the message for. And he used to say that during these two hours that he prays, he finishes his day's work. What kind of work is that? When you are asked to do a rosary, it establishes a connection between three centers, the Kalp, 
which is the heart center but in the beginning the kalp is not invoked so but it connects heart center the third eye center which is the center of determination or it is known as center of the mind and the crown center which is beyond both body beyond heart and mind it establishes the connection between the three and sooner or later if it is done properly the connection is established and the moment the connection is established that has to be abandoned but we continue to rotate the rosary throughout the life neither the shake asks you to stop it nor you understand the purpose behind it it is like you are trying to climb up the ladder to reach the rooftop but you are so much in love with the ladder that you want to remain on the ladder life long you have to abandon the means rosary is a means vehicle is a means meditation is a means everything is a means to reach to somewhere you hop into a taxi or plane or anything to reach to a destination when you reach to the destination you cannot remain sitting in that you have to come out of that in order to reach the des- in order to reach the place where you were supposed to reach and in order to reach to that place you had entered this vehicle everything is a vehicle even meditation is a vehicle in the beginning it is an effort you have to undergo this effort and after that the meditation is not needed anymore instead it becomes the way of your life and when meditation becomes way of your life then it is a state of enlightenment that every moment you had been striving through the meditation to reach to that state where you are moment to moment aware of all that is happening when that has happened it has dropped out of you when you ultimately reach to the destination all that is unwanted slips out of your hand and you enter the cave all by yourself all alone meditation is the antidote meditation is cosmos where everything is in harmony balanced and marriage creates a chaos because two different people with different frame of mind different ideologies and marriage is not the only situation that we encounter in our life when we are working in offices we are interacting with the people with different ideologies different ways and means different way of approaching a particular circumstance and situation if we remember that we are part of one synergistic harmony the ideological differences may be there but the goal is one the same in order to achieve that goal somewhere or the other one has to reconcile and it is easier for the man of meditation to look into the circumstances and situations and act accordingly